you very much. Um, this is also work in progress. Um, we're actually collecting information, proposals, etc., to uh, start uh, a long term research project on, on the subject here. Um, I teach localization, which I will, uh, in a minute, uh, define, if you don't know exactly what it is. It is the, the agenda of what we intend to do, which is basically the last two sections of my presentation. Um, for those of you who don't know exactly what localization is, it's, it could be simplified as a translation of digital products, where all these areas are involved, translation, information technologies, uh, also we use very uh, advanced technical processes and project management, and there are also globalization strategies uh, in, in, play, in place. And uh, we, we do it in uh, university, we have a full undergraduate translation courses in Spain and other countries. And uh, all, another thing that we need to take into account is that most students come into these localization courses, uh, these localization classes, uh, modules, and translation courses have a humanistic background. And uh, we want to introduce accessibility as well uh, as a key component in our uh, teaching of uh, localization in translation courses. Um, it is very important for you to understand that technology for us in localization is not only an aid for our profession, for research and teaching, but is the very medium of the product we translate. So we have, for instance, uh, well, it's a, an example from the uh, website uh, confirming that we have paid for this uh, conference, which is bilingual. And we have several problems there which we take into account when we localize. Uh, we have uh, different uh, character sets here uh, because the um, uh, subject data is, uh, is in ANSI and, uh, but dynamically generated data is in UTF-8. So this is one of the questions we deal with in localization, how data travels from one language and culture to another in digital products. But also in accessibility, this web page doesn't have the language of the web page declared or the different parts declared because it is bilingual. There's one part in Spanish and another part in English. So if somebody who is blind needs to be read, this information uh, may be the screen reader with it with a very fun accent because it doesn't know what the language of, the, uh, of, of this information is. So these are, in, in a way, the aspects that we deal in localization and we are introducing the accessibility bit in the teaching to our students. Another example of what we do in localization, uh, translating, adapting uh, software products, uh, including multimedia um, or even in video games where the cultural aspect is very important too. Now, what are the challenges that we uh, usually have when we uh, need to come up with a Syllabus in uh, localization and how and within the tr uh, translation uh, course, the translation department. Well, there are uh, different images or myths about translation and localization which are difficult to debunk, and uh, we need to work on, on them. And we need to tell, uh, to try to understand, them, to try, try to make our students understand that translation and localization is not what. Uh, general public or the localization industry thinks that translation is not just a question of equivalence, of, liter of literalness, of substituting just one text into another, but it's much more uh, involved. Uh, and also we, deal, we need to deal with a certain current phenomena uh, which are brought about by technological developments like uh, crowdsourcing uh, where people who are not professionals are asked to translate or no money, translation, uh, fan translation and localization where uh, anybody who is a fan of, for example, video games translate uh, for free as well. Uh, and even if I have statistical machine translation where people think that machines can now translate everything, whereas in machine translation, which is very popular now, particularly statistical machine translation, the thing is that machines can translate because there were good translations before in a corpus and that have been processed um, to produce uh, new translations. But also these are problems from the general public and the industry which tend to uh, 
consider translation as something just, just very simple, too simple that any, anybody can, with uh, two languages can do. But also from my own uh, area of studies, translation studies, um, some of our people in, in translation studies think that technical stuff is not for translators, so we should only be dealing with the linguistic or textual uh, stuff when we localize and the technologies for engineers. So we just deal with that. It is problematic because, again, it brings us back to this idea or this conception that translation is just a natural substitute in the text uh, and we don't integrate with the, with the whole process of producing or reproducing or recreating a product which is very important and where uh, the product and the text are inter intermingled. So these are some of the challenges and also uh, in relation to this is where do we lay our emphasis on localized education on the technical side, on the land side, on the culture side, on the more business oriented side. We have had different um, different responses over the years to these challenges, uh, like acknowledging that we need to give a translation-oriented approach to the teaching of globalization, which means uh, dealing with the cognitive uh, aspect of, of, the of, of the product, of how it communicates, uh, cultural aspects, linguistic aspects, it's true, but also it is important for us to try to get involved in the way technology is created way technology is processed in the cycle of reproduction uh, because it will help uh, the, the whole process uh, be more fluid, to, to be more successful, but also because it will allow us as translators to have a say, to really influence uh, how the, the product is transformed because they can see us as experts too and as people who really know what technology is about and how technology behaves, how it is uh, created, so we can actually say, yes, this uh, product uh, is created like this, and we know that this uh, that users would use it like that, so now listen to me, it's important that you understand that this linguistic part is also important, and uh, we will, uh, uh, you can consider us as experts in, in that area. So, we believe that uh, we need to, um, to consider that we are approaching a new cross-disciplinary term for it is translation, which should be said here, and uh, where speci specialists or um, expert professionals are needed, uh, like localizers, who combine, again, the humanistic, the linguistic, the cultural transfer, side and the technological expertise. Uh, and finally, we have realized in the past few years that it is also very important for us to uh, consider the, or to introduce the area of human-computer interaction into our uh, research and our teaching because uh, it links with very well with translation through its emphasis on users, on how the computer, how the devices, how interfaces communicate, uh, what you can do with it, its, it's state, uh, uh, affordances, and in general uh, about the, how it interfaces with users. So in the past few years we have uh, come up with an approach to teach localization, which we have called ECOS in Spanish, which stands for, uh, in English, a community, uh, communicative, objectual and social approach which tries to, it's a holistic way of, um, of combining all these um, aspects of uh, language transfer, and humanistic approach, technology, user needs. Communicative means that, of course, as translators, as localizers, as translators, we mediate in the communication process among designers, what designers want to achieve and how they want to communicate through their interfaces and their products. Um, those who commission the, the translation, the localization, users and the product. So we mediate there. 
And also, as I said, it is very important to understand that the product communicates what it can do and what it can be done with it to afford the system to its constraints. The objectual means that, in a way, we want to get involved in the more technical side of it. Um, because as localizers, we do participate in the material recomposition, decomposition and recomposition of the product. And also in that we, um, we, um, we place a, a big emphasis for students on understanding the objects that um, make up, that um, compose the, the, the product that they need to translate to understand, to try to visualize the, those, that technology as objects, both on the outside as interface and in the inside as files, folders, um, computer uh, libraries, etc. And uh, it is also very motivating, we think, for them to uh, actually touch and experience as much as possible with those objects. And finally, the social means that if they, if localizers, uh, take part in, in all these processes of communication, um, they we, we raise their social professional status within the whole process and within the whole uh, area of localization. Again, uh, uh, together with other agents uh, like engineers, designers, etc. But also we have a social responsibility, particularly in public education towards society, which will bring us uh, in, uh, in the end to the uh, issue of accessibility. Well, this is an example of things we do, we do in, the, in localization teaching, uh, combining the social, the communicative, the objectual, with a dynamic uh, websites, with static websites, different uh, tools, um, in, uh, computer languages, uh, including accessibility aspects like alternative text. This is um, an Android uh, app that we also localize. So, coming to accessibility. Um, accessibility has, for, for quite a few years now, been a, um, an important interest, uh, point of interest, concern for us. And, uh, we have just finished, one of our students, one of the members of my our research group, has just finished a thesis on accessibility and localization. But we have previously taught local accessibility only as an added value feature. So we teach them how to localize, teach our students how to localize, and then we add some aspects about accessibility, like alternative text, like how to, uh, like, color contrast, like declaring you know, on web pages the language of the page, etc. But um, we realized that we wanted to take a step further, and this is the uh, rationale for our uh, next uh, research project, by fully integrating accessibility into the uh, teaching of localization. And this has two aspects. First one is, yes, accessibility is an analytical content, that is, we want students to realize how accessibility is um, a property, or how uh, it can be in, in digital products that we need to translate or localize. But we have also realized that accessibility can also be used as a methodological resource for teaching localization. Um, well, I will tell you why in a minute. This is, uh, if you don't uh, know uh, much about accessibility, this is uh, the web accessibility components that uh, are um, the basis for uh, accessibility for creating content which is accessible by developers using these tools and um, uh, so that users can actually um, access that content through their user agents or through their technologies and uh, the main principles for creating content which is accessible um, web pages are, are these uh, as stated by the WFRC the content should be perceivable, operable, understandable and robust and we have uh, realized that by focusing on these principles and on these aspects of the creation of content, developing, evaluating um, using the, that content, we are actually dealing with localization. We do that in localization. We actually uh, recreate content, evaluate whether the content we have translated is well localized, uh, and uh, we actually see how users from a different culture, in our context, a different cultural and linguistic culture, 
uh, access that content. So by focusing on, on these, we think we, we can uh, develop methodologies and principles to teach localization to our students. So by focusing on these principles, which are uh, realized through computer information, uh, we can help students and teachers become aware of what the product does, what it means, what it can be used for, uh, who and how its beneficiaries are uh, used to be, and how it can be achieved in different locales, in different cultures, languages, or uh, cultural <coughs> contexts. Uh, you can see here three, the three main components, content developers and users. We, we will eventually look into all three, but for the moment we will concentrate on content, on content so on the WCAG, the principles of producing uh, accessible content. And uh, another way of looking at it is that in order to ensure accessibility of a product, it is necessary to decompose the product and recompose it into objects, so uh, intentions, actions. So what the, uh, the designer, what did he mean, what did he wanted to achieve through this thing which is not accessible. So by focusing on this, we are actually producing an analytical process which is very important for local users. Uh, this is the main idea behind our, um, our proposal of using uh, accessibility not only as a content that needs to be taught to students, but as a methodological resource or platform or a catalyzer for teaching accessibility, uh, to using accessibility for teaching uh, localization to students. Well, this is another an example which is very illustrative too. When, I, when we produced the paper for this conference, um, as we deal with accessibility, we had to produce an accessible paper, of course, in PDF format. So while making it accessible, I had to think on what the images that I introduced uh, meant. So I had to produce alternative text which is meaningful for the, for the, for the end user who has a disability. Um, I had to, uh, to, to, to produce metadata on the product and the PDF, which is also very important and needs to be translated if, if necessary. I had to, uh, to, to reflect, to think, about the structure of the, of the documents. So these are things that localizers and translators uh, have to think about when they, when they localize uh, without taking accessibility in consideration. So if you take accessibility in consideration, you're engaging in a process which is very useful for localization uh, as such. Finally, in order to, when we, need, when we have to um, evaluate whether our model works, whether X, uh, or uh, to what extent accessibility is a good methodology for teaching accessibility, besides being a content that we want to uh, introduce uh, increasingly in our localization uh, classes, we need to uh, decide what localization competence is, is to, um, uh, to decide whether, as I said, it works. There aren't any uh, models of localization competence, there are models of translation competence. So we did produce a, an initial model for uh, trying to understand what the localizer needs to, uh, what the competence should be after they become experts or professionals. And we believe that as uh, in, in line with, with what I've, I've been telling you in the presentation, we need to combine all these areas and their activities and, and their interests in order to see um, what localizer needs to know or know how to do. So one of the areas is of course translation competence, a very big area, but also knowledge about the nature of the mechanics and uh, how um, uh, the products are, are created, which we call it some, somewhat tentatively IT engineering competence, uh, it could also be uh, called advanced computer literacy, uh, knowledge, in-depth knowledge about computers, not just, as we said, knowledge that native digitals have about, digital natives have about using Facebook social media, but in-depth knowledge about uh, what the computer objects are, and also human-computer interaction competence, uh, uh, which includes um, knowledge about accessibility, usability, user experience, etc. These are things that we think should uh, be part of the of 
localization competence as a way for us to uh, evaluate, assess whether uh, what we teach in localization and how we teach it is or not successful. Um, I think that's it. Uh, so this is the, our proposal. As I said, it's work in progress. This is what we tend to do, and these are the basis of uh, what we uh, of, of this research project that we intend to introduce. This is the Codex Research Group, and uh, if we are the two people in the research project in the research group who have uh, presented this. Thing. Thank you.